first of all, uh, I appreciate the SSDO that highlighting this issue, this, which is direly needed in Pakistan. So our group was number four, and we were discussing the service providers, what services we can provide, and uh, our member, uh, what the panel was, uh, Mr. Rabia Osman, uh, Noshaba Sattar, Ab Abid Lashari, Zulfkar Alisha, Sheikh Saab, Aisha Sahibzada, and Alisha. So we were discussing thoroughly a uh, number of things, and thanks to our uh, group moderator, she was sharing her country experiences with us as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, we discussed that we need to map out the system. If we, we are service provider, we need to map out the system, the, what are the opportunities, challenges, and things are available that we can utilize. Uh, we have identified the first thing that which one was the establishing of hotline. So we discussed that we can establish a new hotline or rather we can use the existing system. So we identify that uh, uh, one five is the existing system in the country which can be used for this purpose as well. But besides that, we, we also identify that, that uh, the staff of the one five or the responding persons need to be trained they can give priority to the cases of the transgenders, child abduction or trafficking and, and uh, women cases. So this is the one recommendation that we identify and also we discuss the confidentiality of the data that we need to ensure to protect the uh, victims. So this, the second recommendation was establishing the uh, TIP committees we need to uh, see that if the existing committees are there, so we need to strengthen them or, or they are dormant, we can activate them uh, and, and uh, we can establish more district committees uh, in the provinces. Uh, they can be comprising of uh, civil society organizations, NGOs, uh, UN agencies, media, academia, they can, they can uh, provide uh, monitoring and evaluation and, and see the cases. This was the second recommendation and the third was the strict monitoring of the system. The, if the case has been reported and then, then we can establish a monitoring system and the database that we can analyze that what are the cases reported and uh, at what stages they are. And then we also identify the training for the police and the judiciary uh, on uh, different provincial and national laws that, uh, that will help them to decide the, and, and, and proceed further on the speedy trials. We also identify the role and responsibilities of the law enforcement agencies. We have seen that earlier this was the mandate of the FIA and now it's been shifted to the police. But there are trafficking and forced labor at, at, at uh, two levels, at international level and then at a national level. At a national level, we have inter-district and inter-provincial uh, systems that we need to identify and to address them. So this was uh, another uh, recommendation that we need to uh, identify the role and responsibilities and give them training and capacity building programs on the basis of that. We also identify that the laws, existing laws in the, we have seen in the post 18th amendment, the, there are provincial laws and the federal laws that the provincial and federal laws can be translated in the local languages uh, so that the law enforcement agencies can have a better understanding on the implementation. And then we also propose that, that uh, uh, interdepartmental coordination committee between the FIA and the police department. If they have a data sharing mechanism, they can uh, have a better implementation uh, uh, on the, on the, of the laws.
lastly we have discussed that that we can uh, develop some uh, uh, video uh, based on the stories that that can be displayed at the passport offices the person who is obtaining the passport they can uh, screen those uh, uh, videos and get understanding what is trafficking and how they can stuck and how they can get awareness on those uh, issues uh, these are the recommendations that we, we, we propose now. We can uh, ask panel members if they want to add further and after that we can take the questions. Okay, we can take the questions. Okay, if, if I want from to add something. Sorry. Okay, please, um, please. I was of the view that um, all the cases that would be reported by the hotline, the 1-5, so there should be like a, a time frame or a deadline for like of three months to six months within a which, in, in which um, a case should be addressed. I mean like either uh, it can be resolved or like it can be dismissed um, altogether, clearly stating the reason uh, for whatever it is and uh, you know, uh, with, with uh, which, I mean like the, the process can speed up there are thousands of pending cases and uh, people are literally waiting for like more than a decade or two uh, for their turn. So like is the case we can speed up the process in a deadline. So yeah, thank you. In addition to that, we also discussed that the there are certain needs of the victims that need to be prioritized. The legal uh, counseling. Um, Hi, uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shabnam Nawaz and I practice in Supreme Court. I have a question and uh, it's a, it's a, okay, uh, I have to stand. So um, it's a question as well as it's a suggestion as well, because keeping in mind all the discussions that we've been um, getting from, from all the learned speakers yesterday and today, uh, I believe there is a subtle form of trafficking that we are, um, intentionally or unintentionally ignoring, which is like um, small girls, minor girls taken from one province to another and under the pretext of getting married and they're married to these perpetrators and uh, they are like gangs of uh, different, they belong to different gangs. And what happens is when they, when the father goes to the court, they bring the Nikanama and then things stop there. If, even if the girl is under the age of 16 in Punjab, uh, which penalizes anybody who cohabits with a girl who is under 16, even then the judges, uh, they would be, you know, with a casual behavior, that's all right, she can marry even if she's eight, she's nine, she's 10. This is what we get in the courts. So what happens is she's cut off from the parent's fam family and uh, she has nobody to protect her because she's told that um, she'll be, you know, uh, uh, she'll be hurt badly if she goes back to her parents. And then nobody knows, no agency, nobody is there to keep an eye on the girl where she has been taken and how she's living with anybody. So I believe that uh, the grand norm in this uh, particular thing is age and time relevance. You have to have a uniformity in age limit for age of majority throughout the country. Hats off to Sindh province. They have enhanced the age to 18 years. I believe all the parliamentarians sitting here, they need to focus on this and think about, uh, you know, uh, enhancing the age of majority to 18 throughout the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, anyone, please, please ma'am. You are absolutely right. I completely agree with you. I work as the District Women Protection Officer in the Women Protection Center Lahore. It's by Punjab government. We work as a crisis center for women. And we have seen many cases like these. And uh, in most of the cases, we have to refer them to courts and we are depending on the judges uh, to give the decisions and they have to analyze the situation. But unfortunately, in many cases, uh, we don't get the desired result. And uh, many a times, uh, they are asked to reconcile and we are asked to do counseling. Or we are asked to do counseling and we are asked to counseling and we are asked to do reconciliation. But in these cases, the age factor is a very prevalent thing. And secondly, I would like to mention that the trafficking in persons ka concept, the term, 
even many service providers, even in government institutions, unko nahi pata. They don't know, they think it's a very broad term, it's related to the borders. Isko local context mein kaise istamal karna hai, our cases ko kaise identify karna hai, uh, ek massive training courses, ya capacity building, ya sensitization jo hai, that is required to make the people realize how this thing works. Thank you. We also discussed the country context that, that if, because we discussed that the, in particular cases, the family is reluctant to receive the female return. So, so they, there should be uh, some shelter or protection houses that they can go there and get the protection and, and shelter. Can I add to whatever the discussion is? I, I'm just adding sure. to this discussion because Please I run start. a shelter in Karachi. And uh, what the two, uh, uh, what both of you have pointed out is, is true that there's, the judges have a very lackluster attitude towards child marriages, whether it's forced conversion, whether it's child marriage. Uh, re like yesterday, I got information that even the Sin High Court, they uh, uh, allowed uh, underage girls to go with, with the person they had married. Now, if we have this kind of attitude, then we don't expect... That means we're not getting justice. Without justice, there cannot be any results. So I think that's very important that child marriages should be taken seriously because that's where you see a lot of uh, trafficking cases. And I've seen that at the shelter and I think the judiciary should take serious notice of this. Thank you. Any other question? See, we, uh, there is a disparity in the law in different provinces, as far as the age is concerned. We in Punjab, all the women parliamentarians have been trying desperately to get this law changed. But there are religious uh, barriers, implications, and at the end of the day, the Islamic Ideology Council says, well, why don't you first go and do some awareness campaign and change the society, and then you can change the law. So there is very, very stiff resistance. So we want all of you to help because we want to really save the lives of our young uh, girls. Thank you, ma'am. We can take more questions. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. On the last. Hello. Yeah. So my name is Saida Kashmala. I am Advocate High Court. I really agree, okay, I understand the fact that you said that we can uh, use 1-5 already because, because of the lack of resources maybe, but I feel we need to have designated task force for this because I understand the lack of resources, but if we don't prevent it at ab initio at the first stage, then it includes so many other things. Then it includes the prosecution, then it includes the trainings of IOs and everything. So I think we need to have our priorities set. We need to understand the fact that if we prevent it, then we won't be going into all these hurdles. And I agree to the fact that when we talk about uh, underage marriages, uh, which usually is attached with forced conversions too, so we need to train our judges in that regard that they cannot just say that if someone is coming in and giving their 165 key statement, okay, they are uh, agreeing or they are going, they need to understand the facts that the girl is not in that situation where she is captive in a way. She cannot be giving anything, any statement th that can be considered, you know, a willful statement. So we need to have a mass awareness about that and we need to set our priorities by having designated task force just for this and not using 1-5 as it is already overburdened. Anyone like to respond to this from the worthy panel? Uh, thank you very much. I would respond. Uh, as far uh, uh, the question is concerned, I think we have the mechanism in, at uh, grassroots levels in all over the districts. District coordination committees have been formed in almost districts as we have uh, discuss that the need is to strengthen them and as far as the child marriages are concerned uh, uh, we have actually stigmatized this thing if a girl is going to be skip away from her home she is already uh, preconceived that she has run away with any person so we have we have to uh, first of all we have to conceive this uh, concept, uh, concept and we have to investigate the matter at, the, at our own level and 
we should not involve in uh, in the uh, first home as in a bl in a blame, blame game at any level either it is a police level either it is a uh, departmental level either it is at family level so we should own our uh, our minor girls we should own our ch uh, children at home we should uh, uh, we have to train them because family is the uh, 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 first grassroots level unit that we have to train our children that we have to ch ch uh, educate our minors we have organized different sessions in our district district khairpur i belong to district khairpur uh, division sakhar and uh, i am working as assistant director social welfare uh, department and uh, uh, as far as the law formulation is concerned we have best formulation of laws over there regarding the age there is uh, 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 no any concurrence uh, regarding the age because in uh, sind uh, we consider a, a child below 18 as a child a human being below 18 as a child and i think in punjab it's also not uh, uniformity over there so we have uh, and and when we discuss this thing uh, uh, we certainly pertains our uh, conclusion that it collides with uh, the muslim law and ulti ultimately when uh, such cases are referred to the courts uh, uh, i think the minors are not going to, uh, to be justified uh, as per the international laws which define their rights uh, regarding so i think there is a lot of work to be done on the legislation side uh, in pakistan and uh, first of all the age of the child is to be determined either it is 16 14 18 whatever it is it is it should be determined at the federal level and we should follow it okay. in our thank you sir thank you very much. uh seher kamran uh, wants to add something ji seher uh, can somebody please give mic to seher kamran Yeah. Actually, regarding the child age, we are signatory to the Child Rights Convention, which determines that every person below the age of 18 is the minor. So there should be no confusion on that. Secondly, using religion uh, to uh, make an excuse for marrying girls before the age of 18 is wrong, because in most of the Islamic countries, they have raised the age 18 to 18 or above 18. Even the OIC has uh, ratified the conve uh, Convention on Child Rights. Mm. So I think we have to correct ourselves. It needs more education, more awareness to address the root causes. And secondly, I would say prevention, rehabilitation and aftercare. We have to add all the components to ensure that exactly people who become the victim, they are protected and they come out of the fear to report and to uh, to protect the rest of the society. Thank, Thank you. you, Seher. Thank you, Group 4, for your uh, recommendations and uh, suggestions. Uh, on a lighter note, um, I guess kisi or ne bhi notice kiya hoga. I've been noticing that in uh, all the last four presentations and recommendations, there were one similar recommendation that only police need to be trained. Police need to change the attitude. Police need to bring the public awareness. Aise lagta hai, sirf police nahi apna kibla karna hai, baki kisi ne nahi karna. But anyways, that's on the lighter note. Thank you, Group 4.